Saw 2 is an impossibly bad game. Why does this exist? So a few months ago I played Saw 1, which was a little rough around the edges, but I thought overall it was very interesting. Some of you suggested that I play the sequel, and now my life is ruined. Right away from the first novel, you'll see that it just runs weird, with these incredibly clunky animations which make you think that something is very wrong here. And not like, oh it's a saw trap, it's grimy and gross and this is uncomfortable. No, 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 that's not what I'm talking about. I mean, it's like you're watching this game fall apart as you're playing it. But let me back up here. We start off as Campbell who wakes up in the Venus flytrap, which I actually like the idea. It starts out similar to Saw 2 and it made me think that I was going to be part of a Saw movie. But that feeling doesn't last too long. You play this incredibly awkward minigame where you have to cut Campbell's eye in order to get the key to unlock the mask, which is of course in his face. But I mean, just look at this. You will hear the exact same grunt sound effect <laughs> copy and pasted 47 times in this short sequence. <laughs> But all of that is nothing compared to what comes next, which genuinely made me wonder if whoever made this even played the original. Campbell goes into a room where he sees the parts used for the traps in the first game. The only small problem is that once you interact with them, you get flashbacks to events that never even happened. Like with the reverse bear trap, you see it going off on Tap's face. But Tap doesn't die like this in the first game. You go to the next one, the swinging blade, and you can see it cut into Jennings Foster. Again, Jennings doesn't die here. What is this showing? And why is Campbell even having these flashbacks? He wasn't involved in creating these games. Oh, well, maybe this is supposed to be an alternate reality where the characters did die like this, which doesn't even really make sense because all these things happen because Tap survives his test. But like 10 minutes later, you see one of the survivors from the trap. So in one animation, he dies, but then he's alive later on. It makes no since, uh, okay, I think you get the point. There are also glass shards on the floor, which the way it worked so far is that you lose health when you walk over them. This is also what happens later on, but I guess they straight up forgot to program that part in, because even though you can hear the glass crunching, you don't get any health reduction. Then you get the true horror of the game, the wet floorboards, and I did not cut this together to make it look worse than it really is. <laughs> all of a sudden, we do this jarring cut to an animation. I didn't even know that this was the same person at first. I was wondering what the hell was going on here, and it took me five seconds after the quick time event was done for me to put the puzzle pieces together to understand what just transpired. Then, after some more strange animations, we get to the main battle, I guess you could say. And this is where my brain just gave up. How do I even explain this? So Campbell goes into this little open area and opens an elevator to reveal a man with a spiked mask on his head and his hands are tied behind his back. The game is that you have to avoid the man as he charges at you like a wild bison because the spikes on his head will kill you. So all you have to do is slowly step to the left or the right because this guy can only move in perfectly straight vectors across this area because that's how humans work. To win, you have to open the elevator door again and stand in front of it, and you wait until this guy charges at you. And then, like in a kid's cartoon, you step out of the way and he runs into the hole, which he can see. I mean, you know, this guy isn't blind or anything. First of all, his hands are tied behind his back. Why don't we just kick his ass? And why does he run into the hole? Is he really that stupid? It honestly feels like there was another part of this game that, you know, was never explained. Like the guy was actually supposed to be blind. Because there's no way that any human could be this brain dead. But like many other parts, I, I'm sure they just forgot about it. This is the most anticlimactic death scene ever. And why, why is this idiot on the cover? Isn't the box art supposed to highlight the best aspects of your game? Not the worst? Anyway, Campbell's final test is that he's in a hall with walls that start moving closer and closer and he has to choose between sacrificing himself and letting someone else live or letting that person die and escaping. And to the game's credit, this time you can actually make a choice. In the first game, Jigsaw constantly said that you have to choose between letting someone live or die, but if you let them die, you just respawn until you save them. So I like that you can actually make your own choices here that impact the game. Just that once again, the cutscene starts in a manner that almost functions as a jump scare because it's a sudden cut to an animation that feels like it was made by a different studio that never even talked with the people who created the gameplay. 
So then the game actually begins. Yes, this giant mess was just the intro and it doesn't get any better. So now you're in first person for some reason as you walk around an apartment related to the jigsaw killings. Look at this trash man. This just hurts because I genuinely love this series. One of the most successful and watched horror franchises of all time and we get this? Oh, come on. Why does he constantly look around him like he's checking his shoe to see if he stepped into a piece of gum before aggressively whipping around to take a completely blurry photo of the same wall over and over again? After finally exiting this room, you go into a hallway where you approach a mirror showing you how you look. And I guess this is supposed to be some big reveal or a surprise or something, but we already know who we are. It's literally said directly into our face in the apartment, where Michael Tapp, you know, Tapp's son. Ah, uh, Tapp, my boy. Good to see you. Suddenly, we switch back into third person. What is the point of giving us this first person gameplay for one scene? Does this add anything? I mean, I guess it's more immersive. Maybe they really wanted us to see how little effort they put into this sequence by making us get as close to the bad animations as possible. Michael exits the building and is then abducted by Jigsaw in front of two police cars around an active crime scene. It's not even like they're trying to hide it anymore. How bad are the cops in this game if we can get abducted right in front of the police? It's not even a dark alley or something. We're directly underneath a street light. Think about this. It would have taken them less time to create this cutscene if they left the police cars out. But they actively decided, no, 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 no. Put the police cars in. It also takes the person in the mask like four seconds to actually inject Michael with a sedative. In that time, you'd think he'd cry for help. Hey, police, there's the jigsaw killer. You know, the guy in all the newspapers, the man we're all looking for? He's right here. And it gets even worse. How is this possible? Get this. We wake up in a trap and we're in cages. Michael Solomon. First of all, in case you haven't noticed it by now, yes, 95% of all sound effects are just straight up missing, and the ones we do get sound like they're recorded in a gas station toilet. Anyway, in this game, these guys have to walk over glass, and the one who reaches the goal first is free to go. Now, very important, the puppet says, The first one to move their cage to the door will be freed. However, there is no prize for second place. The game starts and very quickly you realize that you can't win here. I mean, it's actually impossible because when the game starts, this other guy is already halfway across the track and you're not even allowed to press any buttons yet. So you lose by default and then we're told... You failed, Michael. What? Fuck. But I'm giving you a second chance. And you just said that there is no second place in this game, clearly indicating that we die if we lose. But all of a sudden we get a second chance? Even if you want to defend the game here, you have to admit that this is like the weirdest. I mean, they chose to put these lines in and make you lose the game on purpose. And then Jigsaw changes his mind? Why is this even included? In the rest of the cutscene, it's quite interesting because we can see in real time where the animators started to give up. There comes a point in Michael's movement where his arms decide to turn into sausage links that fly around like hot dogs in zero gravity. You write stories for your own benefit. Yeah, no shit, that's called having a job. What do you think people do all day? You sell food, but you do it for your own benefit. Dude, I'm just a cook. At some point, you have to draw a line and say, you know, this is getting ridiculous. So you run around some rooms and we get a familiar looking trap. And once again, it makes no sense. We open a door and get a mini game where we have to press the right button to stop the booby trap from going off. This is how it worked in the last game, but here someone decided that nope, that makes way too much sense. Even if you press all the right buttons, the trap will go off anyway. What is the point of having us press these buttons if the trap goes off regardless? In this case, there is a shotgun above the door, and even if you press the right buttons, the gun goes off. And the winning animation, the one where Michael lives, goes as follows. He notices there's a shotgun about to go off, so instead of backing up or moving out of the way, he leans into the door frame and goes closer underneath the shotgun and covers his head with his hands. 
Like, what's that going to help? I might have been wrong. Michael is somehow even more stupid than the guy running into the elevator shaft. Who made... <laughs> this is the winning animation? They gotta be trolling us. This entire part makes the game look so unbelievably bad. And I'm not saying this because I want to be mean. You know, most of you know that in all my videos, I hold back on criticizing movies or games, and I almost exclusively talk about the positive aspects or the parts that I like. But I feel bad for the people who dedicate a part of their life to this, only to have their hard work rush through production to slap together this nonsense. Did no one tell the people in charge of creating this mess that makes them you know, not look very good? So then we encounter some guy who wants to kill us. He swings the bat at a whopping two miles an hour. There's no punching button or anything like that, so I'm walking around here trying to get the fighting prompt to pop up, which isn't happening for some reason, so I'm constantly trying to get close enough to him to trigger the fighting, but it takes forever. And if you thought the fighting in the first game was bad, wait until you see this. So one of the things that even I made fun of in the first game was the hilarious combat system. You would encounter enemies that had a 5 second wind up animation to swinging their mannequin arm or broomstick like it's in slow motion, giving you an infinite amount of time to just sock them in the face. But here I... watch this. It's literally just a quick time event. Every fight is a series of QTEs. Wow, look at how cool this looks with the slow motion. I could cry. How broken can a character model even be? You go upstairs and you can see the instructions that the meathead got. It says that he was supposed to kill us, and then there's a wall with like 60 pictures of Michael. I'm pretty sure three would have been enough, considering that we're the only one in this part of the building. But Jigsaw apparently made a whole arts and crafts project out of this and put up all of this, most of which are just the same pictures over and over again, just that sometimes they're a little distorted. Like this one is stretched to make me look thinner, maybe in case I lost weight, and this is me after I've fallen on my head a few times. This one is kind of just a black square. How did Jigsaw even obtain these photos? The camera is like two feet away from my face. Did we not notice a stranger going right up to us and snap a picture? Usually you can tell that these things are incognito photos taken from a distance, but here the lens distortion, lack of shallow depth of field, and separation from the background, you can tell it's literally just taken right in front of him. Okay, I'm done. We're, we're barely half an hour into this game. Everything, everything in this game is a massive failure, and I, 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 I haven't even started talking about the bizarre lockpicking it feels like the true jigsaw trap is the player forcing themselves through this. Which I'm pretty sure I already made that joke, but I, I really don't care at this point. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I just wanted to make a peaceful gaming video, but I almost had an aneurysm playing this. As always, I hope I get to see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.